uh, after the network layer so network layer is uh, transmitted from one device to the another device data inside a network with the multi routers are there comes into the routers and all these things but uh, above then that of course we need some uh, transportation protocols either uh, tcp udp or sctp so what is the responsibility of transport layer in iot for end to end communication between devices and things and these devices may be possible same type or the different type uh, not the same time and uh, this is the uh, uh, and a reliable and effective data exchange between the devices even when they have the different network capability and constraint network capability means sometime that is the bandwidth is high some somewhere bandwidth is low so if one device they have the data in the bluetooth and they transmit uh, to the wi-fi then bluetooth comes into the picture like different different network capabilities or capacity or constraint is there but uh, this is the responsibility of the transport layer how they can handle such type of heterogeneity in terms of the network capability with the end to end and there are three uh, transport layers are there tcp ud and sctp so uh, that uh, this is the tcp ip and this is the six flop and with the tcp ip sort of thing and udp so here we can see the difference if we talk about the six flop and with tcp udp protocols then this is of course the 15.4 because the uh, six flow is uh, comes into that one and this is the mac layer they use the ipv6 uh, adaptation layer as a 6 flop end and then comes to the TCP, UDP and application. But if you think about the TCP IP itself, not uh, that is the 6 flop end architecture, then you can use Ethernet, Wi-Fi and whatever is there. So uh, this is not some sort of thing, the complete IoT. IoT is like this one, lightweight is required and a wireless personal area network is required. Some lightweight devices and communication protocols are required, not the Ethernet or wired connections and other things are possible. So here they have the different at the in this one layer here they use the ip4 ipv6 not the 6 flow pen at the adaptation layer not required because they can directly transmit this one they are not required any intermediate and tcp udp icmp require http here they have not returned any that type of mqtt and other things here you can come to mqtt and other things so this is the comparison that if we are using the 6 flow pen what type of uh, protocol stack and if i use the traditional tcp ip stack what is there so uh, one thing is uh, important that whenever the IoT application, if you have the very limited data, your device is a very lightweight, definitely we need to use 6 flop pen and adaptation layer. This is not suitable in that case. So in this talk, we cover something about the, some point, important points about the TCP protocol. So a TCP runs over the internet uh, rather than the point to point link. So the following issues need to be addressed. Uh, by the sliding window protocol. CTCP use the sliding window protocols to take care about uh, the logical connections between the process that runs uh, to different uh, devices in the internet. So here we talk about the processors, uh, not only the devices, because we talk about the TCP. So say for example, if I'm using uh, right now this uh, uh, that uh, Zoom, and if I'm also using the WhatsApp, other person they use the WhatsApp and Zoom. So there are two processors, so we can make uh, two TCP connections and working in this. So they're worried about the process to process, not only for device to device. So that type of uh, mechanism is there. Uh, that means uh, internet rather than the point to point. So here this Zoom to Zoom, they need to connect, not only the device to device in that case. and. Uh, of course, uh, that is the connection are likely to be widely uh, different RTT round trip times and other things comes into the picture. And because of they use the routers and network is so uh, widely and different <laughs> devices are so different. So definitely reordering and other things need to take care of about these things. So all these things are uh, challenges or we can uh, that uh, that means need to take care about the TCP and how they can do they work with the sliding window algorithms all these things. And uh, so TCP need a mechanism using which each side of the connection will be, will learn what resources other side to be able to apply to connection. So before they set up the connection, definitely they need to take care about the other side. Whether other side is uh, take care about this is speed of the processing of the packets, uh, whatever packet I generate, they can consume or not. And uh, so that is uh, very important in the TCP. Otherwise, definitely some packet drops at the receiver side comes into the picture. And uh, they also need to mechanism using with the sending side will learn the capacity of the network that not only the capacity of the receiver side, but also the capacity of the entire network that what were the intermediate devices there, whether they are able or whether they are capable to have take care of all these things or not. So in the summary, we can say there are three services of the TCP. One is the reliable communication. And of course, this is the connection oriented. Uh, otherwise, we need to go to the UDP and that is the byte streaming service support in the TCP protocol.
here we use the byte streaming or byte oriented and uh, the byte oriented protocol so uh, this is which means that the sender writes the byte into the tcp connection and receiver reads the byte oriented that means byte wise byte they can read and <coughs> if we use the byte streaming uh, services applications uh, that means uh, you have some sort of uh, streaming of the bytes not the individual bytes or in that case so they support the byte oriented protocol in that case tcp on the source sourced buffering entire bytes from the sender uh, process to fill the reasonable size of the packet and then send the packet to the peer destination this is very interesting so why because uh, otherwise what's happened that numbers of uh, additional packets or messages are required you write only a small size of information you can ready to transmit <coughs> so in that case uh, unnecessary that means uh, you transmit a huge number of packets so how we can reduce we can put TCP put the you know whatever the data is there uh, that means uh, in terms of the bytes into the buffer once the buffer is full then after they can transmit this data to the center side so with the help of this we can reduce uh, the number of uh, additional packets whatever the additional information of packets are required in that case in TCP and uh, packet exchange uh, they can make a TCP peers and count at the segment so you can make the packet exchange uh, between the tcp peers so you can see that this picture this is the uh, that uh, packet generator and this is the packet consumer so this is the sender and this is the receiver they write some information here and at the tcp send buffer they wait for some time once the information is sufficient then after they can divide the information into the segment and transmit a start transmission of this segment and they receive it once the complete information or uh, sufficient information then they can read the information into the process so this is the way that uh, the tcp works uh, in a uh, segment wise uh, that uh, transmission of the data in tcp protocol now we come to the tcp header so uh, the uh, tcp header uh, this is the uh, that is the uh, tcp header so one uh, the first uh, and the second is the source port address and destination port address which indicates the port number so say for example if you use the http you need a separate port because this is a process to process not only the system to system so each process is bind with a some port or some get sort of things so otherwise how we can differentiate between a post process and process at the receiver side so process we can uh, identify or distinguish with the help of port number so that's where uh, tcp use the source and destination port number so they can connect with each other and they also use the acknowledgement uh, sequence number and ad advertisement field all involved in the TCP sliding window protocol so they use the acknowledgement we will see that in later in this slide acknowledgement is required whenever you send the information and uh, sequence number so that you can make the order uh, advertisement window so that you can control the congestion so TCP is the byte oriented protocol each byte of the address is the sequence number the sequence number field contains the sequence number of the first byte of the data uh, so that at the receiver side you can reorder and rearrange all these things whether they are the sequentially or lost something or how we can arrange so only the first byte of the data we can write in a sequence number and acknowledgement and advertisement window carry the information about the flow of the data going on to the other directions like this now here we can see that flag word is also there in tcp header after that so they support the uh, six flags uh, flag is uh, that uh, information so here uh, there are the six flags so one is the synchronization and finishing so sync flag is required or a fin or a finishing flag is required when they establish the connection or when they terminating the connection so if you start the connection you need to send the enable the sync flag if you want to finish the connection you enable the finish flag so at the receiver side when they see that this is the enable that means this uh, want to finish center want to finish or want to terminate their connection the data is already over and uh, this is the one more acknowledgement flag is set any time when acknowledgement field is valid implies that the receiver should pay the attention to this so acknowledgement whenever we send the information we can say the acknowledgement flag set and uh, it indicates that yes this is the acknowledgement for the previous uh, information there is one more two flag that urgent flag we have seen that there is the urgent reset and push so urgent flag significant that this segment content is the urgent data so when you transmit the data may be possible that is the some ordinary data and some data may be possible the urgent data say for example fire detection so fire data is the urgent data or some portion of the payload is the urgent data so in that case we can say this is the uh, urgent flag significant that this segment contains some urgent data and since the segment at the payload is so long so 
Okay, so some data is the urgent data, not the entire data is the urgent data. So what we can do, we can put the urgent pointer. So this pointer indicate that before the pointer, whatever the data is there, that is the only the urgent data. Rest of the data is the normal data. So whenever the urgent flag is set, then only the urgent point uh, urgent pointer is required to set. Otherwise, urgent pointer is not required. And uh, at the receiver side, they can understand. Okay, this is the urgent data. Up to this one point, they can extract it and process accordingly to that one. <coughs> There is one more flag is the push flag uh, in the TCP, it indicates that the sender has no more data to send and uh, wants to receiver to deliver all the received data to the application without delay. So here that uh, very interesting this point, so at this level, so there is two way, either they can full the buffer, transmit it, full the buffer, transmit it, but what's about the last data because every time um, that means the binary is not possible, say for example that uh, that is the segment size is the 3. Uh, and uh, your data is the 10, that the last one is only the 1 byte. So 1 byte is not possible the entire segment. So if we transfer 1 byte, that is the one way that they wait for another 2. So that they can make once again the segment and transmit to that one. And another way is that uh, they can enable to this push flag. That means they can indicate that the center, this is only the last 1 byte. Now I have no data to transmit. So uh, this 1 byte itself is the uh, segment and you can transmit to the for further processing at the receiver size. So this is only the possible at the push flag. And uh, it also indicates that the plus flag is required only at the end of the complete transmission, not intermediate. So some of the flags are not required. Say for example, urgent. If you have no urgent data, why urgent flag is? Uh, we are not required to set the urgent. Data. Once we are not required to set the urgent flag, then urgent pointer is also not required. Similar is the push flag is required only once at the end of the process when there we have no data. So this is only the data that is there. Finish is also the termination of the connection. When you terminate the connection, you need the finishing. Sync is when you start the process, you need to be. acknowledgement is always required whenever you transmit the data, acknowledgement is there. And uh, finally, the reset is uh, uh, some some issues come into the picture or confusion is there, then uh, the receiver has become confused. It receive a segment it did not as, uh, expect to receive and so want to approach the connection, then they can set the reset. So in that case, uh, that uh, connection is abroad and make to once again the new connection and do all these things. Now that is the one more field is the checksum field which is used to check the errors and other things and here they have the complete information. Uh, we generate the checksum with the TCP header that is the data and uh, pseudo headers uh, all these things source address destination all these things merge together and then after you can generate the checksum at the receiver side they also generate the checksum if the sender receiver checksum is the same then there is uh, no error nothing is corrupted data and everything is perfect they can process it so checksum is required for that one purpose so this is all about the tcp header how it's work and uh, how to do uh, that uh, reading of all these data in that case now we come to the that uh, uh, that uh, tcp how they can uh, establish the connection and uh, Yes, so now we come to the uh, connection uh, establish, how we can connection establish. So this is the active uh, participant or they have some data they want to discuss with the passive part or the server. So always that client initiate uh, that okay they have some data or they want to make a connection to the server, they send the request. Uh, since they start that is the SYN flag is enabled, sync flag is enabled. So synchronization is start and hand checking is required. <laughs> And uh, sequence number X. So sequence number they identify the repetition or they can make the sequence order. So sequence number that we already seen the X. Now when the receive the receiver server receive this information and they are ready to make the connection, then they uh, generate the acknowledgement with this thing and they also generate a one new acknowledgement packet which is the sequence number Y. And uh, this is the reply of the sequence number X. That's where they can say the uh, earlier is X. Then this is the X plus one. And uh, this is the thing, this is the three-way handshaking, then once again the client confirm it, yes, uh, we are ready to set up and they acknowledge and this acknowledgement is with respect to the yth uh, that message that is sent by the server. So in place of y, they can say the y plus one. This x and y number, how they generate, uh, there is also a, uh, the number of ways the research are going, uh, research is there. So usually they use the random number so that the repetition is not there. And they start random number x plus x plus 1, x plus 2 and so on. Similar is the y, y plus 1, y plus 2. And generate a random number so that the repetition can 
avoid in that case. So this is all about uh, this uh, TCP header and why TCP is required, how we can connect, uh, make the connection of the TCP. But, it is, uh, but as we already seen that the responsibility of TCP is not only to make the connection between process and process, they are also responsible for reliable communication. And uh, that means uh, that is not only that uh, transmit the data and not worried about others. <coughs> so they are also take care about the congestion control, flow control. So uh, then we can say yeah, this is the reliable or uh, reliability is there otherwise uh, reliability make compromise in that case. So in the TCP they are also worried about the end to end congestion control and the flow control. So uh, why it comes into the picture because of the sharing of the network infrastructure. So if we are not sharing the infrastructure then how we can make the cost effective each and everyone can have the separate line then it is not possible so sharing of the infrastructure is required or whenever the sharing comes into the picture then all these issues are there so uh, there are two type of uh, the resources are there one is the link bandwidth and other is the queue space so link bandwidth decide how to divide the bandwidth between different flows so say for example there is one bandwidth is the 1 mbps here the data flow is the 5 mbps and they also the 5 mbps so definitely they can occupy the entire bandwidth even more than that is required so what's about the blue color communication so uh, decide how to divide the bandwidth between the different flows so of course there are two flows are there then this uh, link need to take care about about the both flows so this is the uh, link bandwidth resource management how to manage the resources with respect to the multiple users and also the queue space is there because of the intermediate routers are there. So when a router decides that a packet has to be dropped, which packet should be dropped? So because of the limited queue space is there. So you need to drop either you can drop this one or that one or equally drop. So this type, these two responsibilities are there for the resource management in terms of the storage, in terms of the link. And uh, uh, what's happened if we are not take care about this type of the resources that congestion comes into the future in that case. So, uh, any one of these if we are not take care about then definitely congestion comes into the picture. So load on the network is uh, higher than the capacity. So congestion comes into the picture why because the load is more than the capacity. So in which cases the capacity is not uniformly across the network this is the first reason. Sometimes you use uh, some uh, that means you know, high bandwidth network sometimes low bandwidth network. So definitely that uh, congestion comes into the picture because of the unequal load. And uh, sometimes that is the, some sort of the aggregation that multiple flow uh, competing for the bandwidth that numbers of flows are there they can compete then uh, congestion comes into the picture and, <coughs> and other thing is that my load is not uniform. So you make a network for uh, daytime traffic where the very few traffics are there but nighttime very high traffic is there. So <coughs> in that case we can say that uh, congestion comes into the picture because uh, that uh, load is not uniform sometimes you use the same network for heavy load sometimes you use the same network for lightweight load in that case. Now what's happen if the congestion comes into the picture. So we know that okay why congestion is there these three reasons are there but if the congestion is there what's happen. So result is the packet loss. <coughs> so because of the router has the fixed buffer so you are not able to inject the more information whatever their capacity is there. So definitely uh, that uh, packet loss is there. And uh, what coincidence and what other effects are there? So one is the delay increase. You know, so build up a long queue is there. If the queue capacity is there, then delay increase. So of course the latency affected. And uh, waste bandwidth for retransmission. So these are the uh, that, uh, consequence of this uh, congestion comes into the picture. If the congestion is there, so increase the delay, you can see that uh, up to this one point everything is okay. Now slowly congestion comes into the picture, at this point the entire network goes down and completely fail. So here the delay is very slow, then you increase the load more, then delay increase very sharply and then infinite delay because uh, the receiver is not able to receive this packet. So this is the infinite delay. So delay increase when congestion comes into the picture in this level. and uh, then waste of the uh, bandwidth that means you try to retransmit again and again because of the load and again and again we transmit again and again congestion comes into the picture so unnecessary retransmission and low network output so here we are able to transmit a less data uh, within a time window so this is the overall picture that uh, a congestion control approach so control the uh, in that case we can say control the entire uh, entry of the data packet into the network at this level up to this one you can avoid by 
uh, entering more data, reduce the number of packets uh, put inside the network. But uh, sometimes it's uh, we are not aware about the congestion or not in your hand. Then in that case, congestion control mechanism is required. So better use of the sharing the network infrastructure so that uh, you can control the congestion. Uh, whatever the bandwidth is there, effectively you can use and to in, in such a way so that the everyone can happy and satisfied and congestion is also avoided. And, uh, and avoiding this one situation, this is the worst situation, then the congestion collapse, then entire network goes down. So very first, need to take care about uh, initially enter the data packets into the network, control less data packet you can inject in the network so that you can avoid the congestion. And if the congestion situation occurs, then uh, try to control the congestion with the help of effectively a better infrastructure use, better bandwidth or better uh, that is used. And uh, after that, of course, if we are not able to handle, then increase the load continuously, then congestion uh, collapse entire network and uh, we can't do anything in that case. So this is the situation that we need to avoid in that case. <coughs> now congestion control approaches, so there are two mechanisms are there. One is end-to-end -end congestion control approach and other one is the network assistant congestion control approach. So end-to-end, -end, no explicit feedback uh, from the network. That means when you transmit the data, you can transmit the data. You are not worried about the feedback about the congestion, whether congestion is there or not. Uh, so how we can know the congestion? Congestion, uh, we can identify the congestion is there inside the network with the help of some loss or with the help of some delay. If some acknowledgement goes down or we are not able to find out some receiver information, then we assume that there are some congestion is there. Or if we receive the information but delay is little bit more, then also that is the congestion situation, we can assume that. Otherwise, there is no mechanism that you can identify whether the congestion is there or not. So TCP work on end-to-end -end congestion control mechanism. Another way is also there that, uh, that a router provide a feedback to the end system, single bit indicate the congestion. If there is no congestion, then bit is of course zero, otherwise bit is one like this one. So this is the additional bit that you need to add, you need to transmit to understand that the congestion is there or not. So this is known as the network assistant congestion control, of course. not the end-to-end -end congestion but the TCP support the earlier one, that end-to-end -end congestion. So the plus point in this case is that whenever the congestion is there, very first you can aware because with the help of this one. So you can take the correct step at the correct time, so you can avoid the congestion. But the drawback is that may be possible your data size is very limited, there is no congestion, unnecessary you need to take a single additional bit, every each and every time. Even you are not required any mechanism for the congestion because your data is itself is very less and not required such type of this information. So this is the, uh, that is the negative point, but the positive point early you can know the congestion before that comes in the situation of the losses or the delay in that case. So the property of the TCP is uh, that is the reliability and in order delivery that means the packet are in order so using the sliding window that we already seen that and uh, uh, this is the same as the L2 but uh, it is the L4 why because we go to the end to end and process to process uh, in that case and uh, when the multiple links are there and they support the flow control and congestion control. So prevent the sender for overrunning the capacity of the receiver and congestion control too much data for uh, from being the inject into the network. So see that there is very interesting uh, keyword that flow control with respect to the receiver and congestion control with respect to the network. So <coughs> when you are talking about the flow control, why? Because the receiver is uh, not able to uh, process the packet, what the packet they have received and the congestion control is... Uh, in the network with, uh, with respect to the network, network is not able to or capable to handle your packets, whatever the packets are there. So TCP effect, uh, no, effective, uh, efficient window for the flow control. So assume that uh, effective window for the flow control. So this is the sender and there is one receiver is there. So in this mechanism, how to flow control works in the TCP. So this is the like last bit acknowledgement that uh, this you start the sending the data from, from this end and continuously you are sending the data. So this is the data 1, data 2, data 3, data 4 up to data 5. You receive the acknowledgement of this one data. Now you already uh, inject the data up to this one point. That means uh, last byte sent because this is the byte oriented. So that's where last byte uh, you already sent in the network. And up to this one information that some of the bytes you also receive in the sender buffer. Not yet sent but yes you already put in the buffer. So this is there three pointers are required at the sender side for flow control. In TCP, <coughs> one is that uh, this indicates that okay, up to this one, we find out the successful acknowledgement 
that means the receiver receives the successful acknowledge then packets in a given order from this point to that one point uh, that uh, sender they send the packet inside the network and all the information inside the network why why is the size of this one data that whatever the data is inside the network this difference between the send minus acknowledgement and uh, this is the what information you return now we think about the receiver side so at the receiver side if we talk about the receiver side and uh, this is the reader that means the uh, this uh, uh, you put the packet at this end whenever the packet is comes into the picture and uh, receiver they consume the packet from this end so they read this packet and after reading this one they expect this one okay they expect this one and uh, whatever the packet uh, they receive uh, in between that is there so they consume the process they out from the buffer up to this one point these packet are uh, that means uh, they are expected in order and put in the buffer but they also receive multiple packets what are the packets are there they put in this they don't know about that is the in order or not but yes slot byte receive at this point this i am expecting and i am not worried about this once we consume this packet then we can take care about this one so what is the size of the x x is the whatever the you are expecting minus one because starting from the zero and minus of the last byte read so that uh, you can find out so y indicate the capacity of whatever the packets you put inside the network and exit whatever the ordered packet uh, at the receiver side inside the buffer so this is the value of y and x so advertised window whatever the advertised window so this is the receiver buffer whatever the capacity of this minus x because x is already in order and you put inside this one now what remaining capacity which is you can put the packet without worried about their orders and other thing is this one receiver buffer minus x and effective window with respect to sender is that advertised window because we read that okay we can put more information in this we can put only this information at the receiver side minus whatever the information you already put inside the network we don't know about this is inside the network or this is here but you already put this information inside the network so you also need to minus of that information so effective window is the remaining window or remaining data that you can inject inside the network is uh, the capacity of this one remaining capacity minus of the whatever the information already put inside the network so this is the about the effective window of uh, tcp protocol now <coughs> there are two advertising window and the effective windows so, advertisement window is the capacity of the receiver and sent by the uh, receiver so this is the capacity of the receiver we talk about this their buffer size is this one minus of this one this is the in order that is everything is ordered we put only for the consume, consume purpose and uh, this is my remaining capacity where we can put incoming packet so like this one and this last word so this is the capacity of the receiver and receiver inform that yes this is my remaining capacity so this is the advertisement window and congestion window is the number of unacknowledgement packet that can be uh, in, tra in transit so it indicates the congestion window that i i, I received the acknowledgement at this point i already advertised send the packet off at that one point so this is the congestion window <coughs> that is already there in the network now what is the remaining capacity of the network remaining capacity of the minimum of this command is this is the maximum window remaining window and if i minus of already sent it minus acknowledgement is the effective window so if not self if we can see that with the help of this figure we can understand that this is my acknowledgement point that i receive uh, sender side i successfully receive uh, acknowledgement of up to this one that means the receiver they receive this information in order and process everything is perfectly and uh, this is the last byte sent i send this information so and this is my buffer capacity so maximum window is like this one and uh, this is the min of this one and because this information is already inside the network so effective window that means remaining information that you can send in the network is only up to this one. this is the effective window how we can calculate in tcp for uh, flow control now tcp congestion control protocol address two functional question one is how do the sender determine the available capacity of a flow at any point capacity of the flow so because here for the same and for the capacity of the flow they need the advertisement window they need to the congestion window then they can calculate the maximum window and then after they can find out so that how the center can know so a very simple mechanism tcp use they increase the algorithm uh, that one by one and uh, once uh, some loss is there then they can identify your congestion comes into the picture and uh, what reaction from the center side uh, to congestion when it occurs so what they will do that 
degrade uh, that uh, reduce the speed of the uh, inject the packet insert so dec uh, decreasing algorithm determined how this is done by the actuator so first the increase algorithm uh, determined and a decrease algorithm so increase traffic again and again till the congestion comes into the picture once that is there then they decrease <coughs> uh, the packet generation or put the packet inside the network to control the congestion so this is uh, that we have seen that uh, in the pictorial in that name so there are two <coughs> mechanisms one is the slow start slow start they do up to a given threshold and threshold is the slow start threshold we can say and uh, this red color indicate the slow start in tcp okay so this is the threshold they can increase the tcp up to a certain point if either threshold comes into the picture or the packet loss is there because we already see that the packet dropping is start or packet loss is there time then they can adopt the AIDM that means adaptive incre increasing and multiple decreasing. So whenever they increase after that, they increase plus one by one by one and the decrease divide by two multiple times. So multiple decreasing and adaptive increasing. So this is uh, let we can uh, see this picture. So here they start the slow start, increase the window, increase the window up to the SS uh, threshold. If uh, or SS, any congestion comes into the picture, then the multiple decrement is there, they decrease this one. And once again, uh, they start this one up to which one point? Up to this one point divided by two. Let we will see. And after that, they start the additional increment, slowly increment one by one, plus one, plus one, plus one, up to this one point, and once again to this exercise. So this is the algorithm that uh, we discuss. Slow start. So initially, they assume the congestion window is one. Initially, they assume the one congestion window. So they send a one packet and bed for the acknowledgement. They see that yes, I received the successfully acknowledgement. Then they generate the two packet and receive the two acknowledgement then they are also happy that then multiply by two then they generate the four packet and receive the four acknowledgement like this one they increase the congestion window and they increase the congestion window up to either the threshold comes into the picture or the packet loss is there so if the congestion window is greater than the threshold then um, that uh, if the congestion window is greater than the threshold then each time and uh, segment is acknowledged and increase the congestion window or continue till the packet loss is there. If the packet loss is there, then just half the congestion window, whatever the congestion window is there, and set as a uh, slow start threshold. That means you need to do slow start only up to that one threshold. And once again, the congestion window comes at the point number one. So, what is the advantage of this? Initially, you start the slow start, and after that one point, you increase one by one by one by one. And once the congestion comes into the picture, go down and set the threshold up to the 50 times or 50 percent of that one whatever the value you have received and then you start once again the slow start like this one so here that if the uh, congestion window is less than then you can work perfectly uh, there we are not worried about this if that is the this one then you can adaptive increase that will only increase by one go a little bit slow not very fast if timeout is there or congestion comes then just set the half of this one and start from the one by one by one and do that. So this is the congestion control mechanism in TCP protocol. Now, whether this is a fair and uh, effective or not. So assume that there are two flaws are there, flow number one and flow number two. Two sources are there, both sources, they generate some information in that case. So if this flow is fair, then we need to follow this green color line. If I am working towards this region, then I am biased towards the flow number two. Network. Uh, biased towards the flow number two if i am working here then i am biased with the flow number one so say for example if i am here that means i am transmit only the flow one data and maximum throughput of the flow one data and there is no data of the flow two in that if i am transmit at this point that means uh, i am transmit only the flow two data not flow one data this is the uh, that means uh, effective window that we need to transmit in that way and if I am within this blue color line, that means we are not utilized the network entire. Okay. If I want to use the network entire, then definitely we need to work in this line. So this is that uh, this effectively and fairly use of the TCP window. So here we have seen uh, that uh, for the flow control, for congestion control, adaptive increment and multiple decrement. Whenever the congestion comes, then you can divide by two. Otherwise, you can increase one plus one plus one. Whether this mechanism is effective or not. So what options is there? Option is that one is the multiplication increment and additional decrement. That means whenever increase you multiply and whenever the congestion comes into the picture, you can decrease only 
<coughs> that means one point or two point. In that case, you can see this is the wires towards the flow two or the wires towards the flow one. But they are not working both directions. They go only in one direction. Why? Because you increase multiple times and decrease only one. So decrement is very less as compared to increment. So in that case, you go in a only one direction. So it is not fair. And this is not effective. You are not able to work in this. If we are doing the increment and decrement both adequately, that means only one plus or one minus, then you are working only in a loop. There is no progress in that case. If uh, you use both direction multiplication, then very sharply increase, very sharply decrease. There is no progress in that. Progress is only whatever the mechanism that we have seen, adaptive increment, multiple decrement. In that case, whenever you decrement, you can go down, increase by one, go down by uh, multiple uh, multiplies format, then increase by one. So you can see that we can work in the both direction and uh, towards this line and nearby this green line. So other three mechanisms are not working perfectly, only this one and this is the effective and fair. So this is the proof of that whatever that we have seen that whether <laughs> it is the effective and fair in terms of the TCP protocol. Now that we have seen the sliding window, TCP congestion control, TCP flow control, whatever is there we have seen. So they have some limitation and uh, uh, we will see some slide that how uh, we can overcome such uh, limitation in TCP. So some extensions are already exist in that case. So uh, in that case, say for example, initially congestion window is one, you find out the acknowledgement congestion window is 2 then uh, so you have that 2 acknowledgement then you transmit 1 2 4 multiply we are doing the transmission time uh, to increment so when you use the 4 then uh, some congestion comes into the picture of packet loss is there so in that case if you don't know about this then definitely loss is very high because 4 packets you need to transmit then after it so what mechanism is possible in that case because you are using a 1 2 4 you know that loss is only 4 so if we use the duplicate acknowledgement mechanism, three duplicate mechanism acknowledgement, then you can save the time of retransmission of the entire information or waiting for the transmission. So if uh, this receiver, they have successfully received one, two, four, five. So they know that fourth number is missing. So whenever they find out the phone number missing, when they receive the five, they say four acknowledgement, I have not received four. When they receive the six, they also acknowledgement four, then seven. They so when the receiver received the three successfully acknowledgement, three duplicate acknowledgement, then they understand that yes, the receiver is not received the phone number packet. So with the help of this, we can reduce the retransmission of entire information 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. So this is the fast retransmit uh, mechanism in TCP. So you can save that time uh, for 4, 5, 6, 7 transmission of this one. So see the difference that uh, that is a very interesting thing is this one. So this is uh, your slow start uh, that uh, then after you start the slow start after increment and decrement. But if we use the, uh, the whole mechanism that uh, three way three acknowledgement then you can see that up to this one point then they go increment by one by one then after go at this point and then. So throughput increment is very high as compared to the normal mechanism that uh, we have seen. And nano is the extension of uh, the previous one that uh, uh, here what we have there after the first uh, retransmit that is the three retransmit set the congestion window divide by two. So up to this one then congestion comes into the picture we can set the window SS threshold from this point to that one point 50 percent and uh, once again the 50 percent and uh, doing all these things but we fix a time window after the time window return the slow start once again. So, because we know that the name is the slow start, but this is not a slow start, this is the incremental exponential. So, if I am doing the increment one by one by one, then it is very tough to reach at this one point. So, you know what they have done? They use a timeout window, after timeout window, once again that comes into the slow start mode, that means continuously they increase the window up to a particular time window. So here they have the, done the comparison that okay what is the benefit of this one and that one. So they can see that uh, uh, that is the congestion is very less and find out a good throughput in that case. So every time they start the slow start in that way. So increase the throughput of the protocols in that way. This is the last one uh, TCP extension that uh, so uh, that improvement of the you know so he, in the previous slide uh, that uh, the both approaches that either uh, slow start threshold or congestion window they increment one by one or using some mechanism in that way but uh, here they use the adaptive uh, set the both that means uh, adaptively you need to set the value not one by one by one or divide by two like this one type of so here we can find out a better threshold value so that uh, 
you can increase the throughput of the network or uh, optimal performance you can improve in the network. So this is the one more extension of this one. So we can see that by default TCP is the simple protocol initially, then congestion comes into the picture. So they start the AIMD and slow start and uh, we need to keep in mind that slow start is not the slow start, this is the exponentially increasing. Adaptive increasing is the plus one, plus one, plus one and uh, but it uh, takes time because of the congestion then transfer the 4, 5, 6, 7 then they solve this problem with the help of messaging the 3 in place of uh, that one. So first rate transmission if 3 duplicate messages are there then they can understand that yes uh, uh, congestion is uh, there and they can transmit only the 4 number packet so they, they can control. So improvement of the throw. But here uh, they also have the limitation of that one slow start. So what they will do they use some timeout window after timeout they once again start from uh, that is whatever the earlier not start from the one otherwise it takes time to reach that one point. So here the timeout window they start from that one point and but here they use the divide by two and plus one mechanism. So they propose some additive technique. So here some research paper is still going on that uh, how we can find out the effective function. This function consider the access threshold, congestion window and bandwidth all together to figure out and find out an effective way to increase and decrease. So this is the, the last one protocol. So this is the way that uh, how these uh, windows are working, how we can use the congestion control and avoidness in that mechanism. So this is all about from my side regarding to this uh, uh, network and transport layer uh, for IOM.